That there is Rod Brewski. Rod and I met when Jake Tackiff and I did a butchery workshop uh, on pigs down in Lyons, Colorado, about geez, 10 years ago now. And so Rod and I have been buddies ever since, and we kind of have a hog share program these days where we raise two pigs, and then he comes up in the fall and helps process. And so uh, we've been working this way together for years and it works out pretty well. But Rod had come across a deal where he ran into a fellow who had put together these two smokers and put them on a trailer just to cater his daughter's wedding. And then after the wedding, had no use of it. Somehow Rod ended up with it. Well, he uh, cut one of the smokers off for himself and cut the other smoker off. His wife ended up using the trailer to make a tiny house. And he's been talking about bringing that other smoker over here for some time. Well, finally this fall, he brought it over on this little U-Haul trailer and Operation Dumpster Fire was born. This thing is four by four by four feet and it's about three-eighths plate steel. Heavy beast, but we had to figure out a way that we could get this modified and situated so that we could not only use it here on the farm, but also have it available for the broader community. And because we're the kind of folks who like to smoke whole pigs and uh, have get-togethers like that, it's gonna be super handy. So this is a, very much a community project. There have been a lot of players involved and still a lot of players yet, but Operation Dumpster Fire so far has been a success and I'll catch up to speed on how far we've come. First, we headed over to Down Home Farm. Daniel Larker had this adorable little trailer hanging out by the barn and contributed it to the cause. So we'll mount the smoker on top of this little radio flyer wagon of a trailer then up to cedar springs farm to grab my welding gear that had been up there in storage so we got that all dragged out now the uh, star of the show are these two pigs this is why rod came up so we could drop these and process these and he could take one back to his family listen to these cranes in the background so we got these pigs butchered out and hanging and then I took all the hams and put together a wet brine for them and did a dry brine for the bellies. We got the hams in these buckets, but I didn't have any refrigeration space for them. So I went down to the creek and created a hydro-cooled ham locker underneath this root ball that was exposed in the floods this spring. So with the creek running at 45 degrees, that keeps these hams at the perfect temperature to cure for about a week. They are all snug in the creek. What are we at? Um, we're at phase six of Operation Dumpster Fire. Excellent. Okay. Turn it on. Now that we converted this 30 amp outlet into a 50 amp for this welding rig. Sure enough. We went over to the neighbors and got some scrap steel to use for legs. And we'll go down here about a week later and check on these hams. Make sure the bear hasn't come by and helped himself. And boy, sure enough, there they are, hanging out in the creek, in the shade. We better get this smoker together. These hams are about ready. So lifting the smoker with the old John Deere, we'll get it situated on this trailer and get to arcing and sparking. Now, I'm not a very good welder, and the old saying goes, if you can't weld well, weld a lot. And so that's what I tried to do. My skills came up a little short in some aspects of this, but we'll get to that in a little bit. So with this massive smoker secured to our little trailer time to get to figuring out a firebox and I want to stick to the side of this thing so we can have the offset smoker and just so happened that uh, I had an old compressor that had been drugged on the highway and was no longer functional so I'm gonna take that and cut the motor off and use this 20 gallon tank as my firebox. So I've 
put a line on it and I'm going to come in with the angle grinder and just get myself a hole that I can put a heavy metal cutoff blade for my sawzall into the slot and finish this cut all the way around I try to get something that's reasonably straight and then once we've got the top cut off of this all this paint on the outside is going to have to go so fill it up with wood lit a fire in it let that burn to cook all that paint off the outside and then we can move on to getting some legs to support our top heavy smoker on this little trailer we'll cut off the old legs first using the cutoff wheel and the angle grinder and with those out of the way we can cut this heavy steel pipe for the new legs and once again using that cutoff blade it's much safer than using the cutoff wheel on the angle grinder the paint's burning off that tank real nice cleaned up the locations where I was going to do this welding and then got to it so I'm basically going from the smoker on a diagonal to the rails of this trailer try to counteract the top heavy nature of the thing and then welded these hinges cut a slit on that tank and then once the hinges were welded cut the rest of the sides and welded that foot onto there as both a handle and a doorstop so this is the tricky weld and I managed to get it tacked on there pretty good but my skills just weren't enough to lay a nice bead on this without blowing through either the smoker or the firebox so I'll end up taking this to a buddy to help me out with later down the road but it was good enough to give it a test run so just lit some scrap in the firebox and let that burn and just to see if it would draw and sure enough there it is drawing out the stacks you can see that black soot there where my poor welds are leaking let that fire burn for a little while and looks like it's doing what it's supposed to do at least we're gonna get smoke through the chamber and that's the main thing so with the test confirming that this system will work it was time to dry out those hams and get that bacon tacking up and the reason that I wanted this big smoker is so that I could do an entire year's worth of ham and bacon at one time so this is one pig both bellies and all the leg meat I boned out the hams and basically made them personal size so running this with a charcoal fire in the first part of the cook and then eventually started adding some peach wood to it and it's doing pretty well the one problem I do have is I'm not getting up to the temperature that I want to get up to we're running about 160 here and I'd like to run about 250 inside of this and I think that if I can get a better weld between the firebox and the smoker I should get a better draft and more heat coming into the the smoking box itself so that's the plan if I can run at 250 then we can do those whole pigs and things like that this did end up getting me where I needed to go see we've got the peach wood there that's just pruning from a peach orchard nice fire raging Smoke's a billowing. Yeah, and I gotta tell you that the bacon and ham that came out of this smoke was absolutely exceptional. Best bacon I've ever had. And you can see that ham on the fire side getting up to 136. I'm shooting for 145 on these. And of course a little cooler on the bacon side. My wife came out and Gave her a protective coat of bacon grease just to keep it from rusting anymore. And there's our finished product. This bacon is phenomenal. We ended up putting up about 40 pounds of bacon, about 45 pounds of ham, and that gets us through the year pretty well. These are nice to have for a ham dinner or just with eggs in the morning or slice them up for sandwiches. And there it all is. Years worth of ham and bacon. 
So the guy I'm going to turn to to help me fix my welds is the guy who built this awning. He's a found object sculptor and certainly far more skilled than I am, so be sure to subscribe if you want to see part two of this when we finish this thing off and get it painted and ready for service. Yeah.